Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 21st of August 2013. So in today's news we have the patch 5.4 release date and how it might actually be different or might not. A an interview with one of the technical staff which is pretty cool and some blue tweets. So first of all we have patch 5.4 now. There was a German interview with Tom Chilton and what came out of this interview was that apparently patch 5.4 is coming out on the 10th of September. Now this is quite different from the uh, the previous date of the 27th of August, which like it, it wasn't solidly confirmed, but it was pretty much confirmed via Twitter. Now it's very possible um, that something was lost in translation and the 10th of September may have been something like, in my opinion, it could be something like say the date an LFR wing opens, it could be the date season uh, 14 starts, that sort of thing, and might not actually be the release date, because do remember, the patch drops and then it really takes one or two weeks for everything in the patch to unlock fully. So I think it could be that, but it's definitely worth watching. I really hope it's the 27th, because I've done a whole bunch of videos, like uh, guide videos and stuff, and you see if Blizzard changed that, I'll be damn pissed. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's hope that doesn't happen. Now next up there was a technical interview. Uh, this was one of their, I think it was their technical director or something like that. And there are some interesting stuff. So they said that they feel the black market auction house was pretty successful and there's no planned changes. That's fair enough if you have ridiculous amounts of gold and I suppose it's a fun place to go and pick things up. They also want the economy to protect players. So they actually said specifically not like in EVE where players can essentially play the economy to the massive expense of others. A good example is say in EVE uh, if you want to starve another like corporation, like a player corporation of resources or something, you can literally just destroy them economically and then when you actually do have like a massive fleet engagement you'll have that latent advantage of being able to have resources or maybe you artificially inflate the prices of things that uh, a corporation needs in order to combat them, things like that. EVE is a very free and open economy. World of Warcraft, they wanted to protect players, and given that EVE is a sandbox game and Warcraft is a theme park MMO, I think it's better that they protect players, at least to a, you know, an okay level. Too much protection, obviously, would be awful. Now, the, the, um, the Guardian Cub, when it came out, it was a thing you could buy in the Blizzard store and also sell in the auction house. Now, they said it was an experiment, and uh, it really just it didn't seem to be popular enough to do again and also they didn't want to jank around with the economy too much so I think that's all fair enough. They also said that they specifically don't want to sell gold because it would be very unpopular and they also say it would be bad for the game and really what matters is Blizzard saying it's bad for the game so this is good news. They also said the store in Asia is an experiment like the Cub and it's really for Asian players to save time. Of course with their business model they might play, they, they could pay for three hours and maybe they could get more like more value out of their three hours if they were able to use a boost so they could actually cram more progression into those three hours. Given the Asian payment model, I think that's okay. And they also said that a lot of it will not come from the West, they imagine, or to the West. They also said that keeping uh, countries with bad internet in mind is how WoW evolved to cope with poor connections so well. This is interesting, I am in Northern Ireland where we have had shit internet for a long time. In fact, like places like I know America, UK, awful internet as far as like things go. I know, go to Sweden or Korea if you want good internet. They have crazy stuff. Anyway, that is it for the technical interview. Next up we have some blue tweets now. The first thing is that they say that they think people like old sets due to nostalgia. Now. I actually think that he's both wrong and right in saying this. Nostalgia is obviously something that plays into it, but also Blizzard's art direction has been changing uh, armor-wise the last while. You know, it's it's moving in a bit of a gradient from. I I really think it started mostly in the Kata period, and it's it's kind of moving on that way. And I just think that maybe the sort of mindset that they are that they're in at the minute in designing pieces just doesn't really give it doesn't produce as good tiers because you just look at the last few tiers and really people have been kind of pissed actually from what I've noticed. I think the current tier is probably the worst I've ever seen in a Warcraft tier. Even some of the Wrath stuff which I remember at the time being unpopular. Well I remember me kind of thinking it was cool because it looked all Nordic and a lot of other people being angry about it but whatever. I think nostalgia does play into it but also there have been clear changes in the way they do art since then and perhaps those changes are not as popular with players as Blizzard may think. Now next up, people were talking about gearing alts and do you know how it's hard? And here's the thing I just want to point out. The timeless isles will solve that because um, <clears throat> the 496 gear 
is bound on account. So you can get all the gear in your main and just post it off to your alts and it'll be brilliant so that's really handy. They also said a very good thing in that item upgrades will probably stay in 5.4 which is very good. And finally they said the connected realms is not for having alts at least initially and they have to see how it pans out. Now this was in response to a player asking how uh, you know if they could send heirlooms between connected realms. I could just imagine some crazy person having like 30 level 90s in the same connected realm or something ridiculous like that, which I think would be kind of utterly crazy. But, uh, I don't know what I think about that. Anyway, that's it for the show. Um, I'm going to do another video soon on the Forge, not the Forge of Souls, the new Diablo expansion. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.